Thank you guys so much for joining us. We are doing a mock draft today. Let's dive in. All right, so I'm I'm drafted at five. Jason's uh, at eleven. Uh, just to kind of give you guys some different perspectives on what's going on. Uh, my strategy this year for sure is to hope that Travis Kelsey falls to me. Oh. And if you're watching along, he didn't. So um, wow. again, we're using Sleeper, which is absolutely fantastic to use you can do your mocks anytime on there if you're bored at work you can just log on and do a quick you know settings eight teams 10 12 whatever you want and it's best to just get reps doing these mock drafts and so i'm going in saying hey i want travis kelsey i want that number one tight end i don't care where i pick and i'm drafting at five and the first four were mccaffrey kelsey jefferson cup so okay not what i was expecting wow so best available, Jamar Chase, Austin Eckler, Tyreek Hill. Uh, Burrow's currently dinged up at least a little bit. And so that just drops Chase a little bit for me. Austin Eckler had all of those catches last year. So that's who I'm going with. They, they should have a very similar offense. We saw what, what they've done uh, with the new offensive coordinator. So happy to have Eckler at five. Just not what I was planning on. Yeah. Uh, after Eckler goes Chase. Jonathan Taylor, A.J. Brown, Stephon Diggs, and Bijan Robinson. By the way, stay away from Taylor. That's a mess. Yeah, it is. A, well, I don't know. That whole back problems. I never said I had back problems back and forth. It's all weird. A little juvenile right now. Um, so I'm sitting at the 11 spot, and I am looking at Tyreek Hill, Saquon, C.D. Lamb, and Nick Chubb. And... I am salivating over a couple of, of these running backs. I also love C.D. Lamb here. Tyreek, personally, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a suspension involved at some point for Tyreek. He is in, I believe, the court system for an assault down in Miami on a dock for slapping a guy. Um, don't slap people. Um, so with that, I'm going to take Saquon, considering he's under contract. Oh, I'm pissed that Chubb went. Uh, Tyreek went. Tyreek and Chubb were the wraparound, which leaves CeeDee Lamb sitting in my lap, and I will take it. After yeah, CeeDee Lamb I goes Devontae, Mahomes, Garrett Wilson, Derek Henry, and Josh Jacobs, back to Krogh in round two. Yeah, really expect big things out of CeeDee Lamb this year uh, with Brandon Cooks on the other side, and, and you know, they're... Dalton Schultz not being there, I would expect even more targets for CeeDee Lamb, who I believe had uh, top six targets uh, in the NFL last year. So um, lo love the start to your team. Uh, Garrett Wilson, uh, I would have absolutely loved to have seen fall in there. Um, He's creeping up, man. Yeah, so wide receivers, you're looking Amonra, Jalen Waddle, Olave, Higgins, Smith. I. I think there's still too much value at, at running back, but I'm also keenly aware that if I don't get a wide receiver here, the value falls off substantially. And I don't really want to deal with that on the back end. I, I feel like if you don't come out with at least one wide receiver the first couple of rounds, you're just kind of asking for trouble. So uh, I'll, I'll take him on or St. Brown here and just be fine with it. Golf was, was good thrown to the edges and uh you know their other suspended wide receiver the first six games due to gambling so uh totally fine with this uh, other players that went waddle a couple quarterbacks and hurts allen Brees hall stevenson pollard who you and me are both super high on yeah uh, the, the going fact that they're late. going Early, the beginning they're going the too third. late yeah Even they're going way too late and right so so those three running backs of Harris, Pollard, and Stevenson going in the beginning of round three is just absurd to us. We have all three of them ranked in the top 12 uh, in our rankings. So uh, again, if you want to get that, you can go to the fantasyfootballsackos.com and we'll mail out our final rankings once uh, we get closer to draft season. All also, right. what a drop uh, off at running back now. Huge drop off at running back where... I think at this point, you kind of wait. Uh, I do like Joe Mixon. I do like ETN. Uh, but I, I think there's just guys that you can wait on here. And so maybe it's a little unconventional, but I, I do think that Mark Andrews is is a nice, safe pick here. 
uh, where the Ravens offense is going to change a little bit and to get one of those top uh, top three tight ends locked in is is always safe and nice. After Andrews to AK goes Olave, uh, Devonta Smith. Way too early for Olave. Joe Burrow, Travis Etienne, and DK Metcalf. And now it is my pick. And this is when I start hemming and hawing on what to do. So quarterbacks available, Lamar, Justin Fields. You got to figure the team behind me will probably take one of those two. Uh, tight ends are Hawkinson and Kittle. I think if I don't take either of those with one of my next two picks, both the quarterbacks and the receivers, that they'll probably be gone. I really want. So, yeah, I mean, you, so, so you, you want a tight end or quarterback coming out of round four here? Is that kind of your plan? My plan is if you're, yeah, if you're sitting on the back half of the draft, you probably want either a tight end or quarterback in your first four picks. Our general piece of Sacco's draft advice is you need to have an advantage at either tight end or quarterback. Um, and you can't be average at both because then you're not setting yourself apart from the other teams in your league. Um, I really love and with, what, and with four, four quarterbacks are gone. Two tight ends are gone. So that's leaving you with a top three tight end or a top five quarterback. Yeah. Um, so you kind of, kind of got to make a choice here. Yeah. I, I, I bet that the, uh, the CPU is probably going to take a, uh, if they take a tight end, it'll be Hawkinson. So I'm going to see if I can't roll the dice. Um, I'm going Kenny Walker because of the upside, because of what he did last year. Charbonnet's a rookie. I am hoping that and, Walker and Char- Charbonnet's hurt. Walker also yes. has a groin issue. My yes. assumption is is that they're getting him right, but Charbonnet is a little bit concerning. So I, I do actually think that helps Walker's value, presuming uh, that groin bounces back. Yeah. Everybody loves a groin bounce back. Um. I like Mixon here. I like Aaron Jones. I like Gibbs. I, really I still like don't understand why Joe Mixon's so low, uh, who has perennially been, been, you know, a top top twelve guy. Uh, him still being available in the fourth round doesn't make any sense to me at all. Actually, no. And now he's on my team. <laughs> so so much for your quarterback or tight end theory uh, uh, we'll see who gets back to me you know it's still early enough yeah it's true and and two quarterbacks just went before i'm picking and lamar and justin fields which kind of pisses me off quite frankly uh because i would have loved one of those two running quarterbacks uh, I don't mind Herbert, but uh, I think it's just a smidge too early, uh, and especially with only two teams between me coming back that don't have a quarterback. I will hope that Herbert falls back to me uh, in round number five. So lots, lots going on here, right? Is it Amari Cooper with you hope that Deshaun bounces back? I did see something uh, on Twitter. Uh, I forget who it was, but they... Um, Splice like the the top uh, eight attempts from like passing distance that Deshaun threw last year. Six of them were all overthrows and seven and eight like attempts downfield distance wise were both intercepted. So Watson was oh. bad last year. And so like Amari Cooper clearly has the upside. Um, but I just think that like I, I think I'll just wait on wide receiver a couple picks here, knowing that I have at least one, uh, one high upside, and and I'm going to focus uh, on some other places. So, uh, I know it doesn't make any sense to take Dobbins with Mark Andrews, but I just like the value, quite frankly. Like if you're going to get some, like I know you have the potential for, um, for Lamar to rush it in, but. I think it's Dobbins. I think it's Andrews. You kind of have a mini stack, and I think the offense is going to be fine. Dobbins still on the pup, not at camp yet, not participating yet. He'll be fine. Uh, and then the the other player um, that, I mean, Herbert, again, went a pick right before I came back, so kind of getting screwed on the quarterback luck here. Um, but I, I'm going to take our guy that uh, we both love more than anything else this year, and that's Alexander Madison who 
there's just we, we haven't ranked in the top 12 unless they sign somebody, which I don't think they are. I think he's a bona fide league, win- league winner that's going way too late. It's just crazy. Yeah. Also gone Hopkins, Amari, Miles Sanders, DJ Moore, Damian Pierce, Christian Watson, TJ Hawkinson went right before Herbert went. Uh, Krogh took Madison. After Madison was Kittle, McLaurin, Drake London, who I was hoping to land as my wide receiver too, uh, went three picks before me. And then he went Cam Akers and Kyle Pitts. Yeah, and I feel like Cam Akers has really actually risen up quite a bit in the last couple of weeks. Uh, and I think people are starting to, to realize what he did at the end of last year. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I know this is being simulated. The person drafting behind me would never take Jerry Judy here. Although I feel like sometimes this thing can do nonsensical, nonsensical because it's all based on ADP. And if you look at Team 8 right now, they have four receivers, a quarterback, and no running backs. So um, <laughs> if we were drafting with humans, I would probably stay away from Jerry Judy uh, and take a tight end here or Trevor Lawrence. But we are not. So I will take Jerry Judy here. And two Ooh, running backs especially went. Tim- Tim Patrick being hurt um, and like I think that only helps Judy's value who uh, in case you weren't aware Patrick just tore his Achilles so he's not there and then KJ Hamler actually they cut him due to a heart issue he's they're planning on hopefully him coming back but it's basically the Judy and Sutton show in Denver yeah I was gonna say I don't know if uh, you could say that Tim Patrick you know was necessarily hurt he's TKO'd like he is done for the year um, yeah I and this is you know I, I know he's not you know one of the top three guys but Dallas Goddard was a man amongst boys when he played last season double digits routinely you know high scoring game in Houston put up 24 fantasy points in PPR I was a big fan of Goddard going into last season and again, we already talked about it. you have to have an advantage at one of the two positions. I think Goddard is an above average tight end. I'm going to take him here in the sixth. Yeah, totally fine. I, I have no problem with that. You had to get him or, or a quarterback there considering your flex spots already filled. So now you're kind of kind of chasing on the back end here. Um, I uh, don't have a quarterback. Um, I, I think uh, I will happily take Trevor Lawrence here with the upside of Ridley back, ETN out of the backfield. You still have Christian Kirk there. Trevor Lawrence is is ascending, and I think this is just – I didn't want the, the team on the end there to get him. Very, very happy having Trevor Lawrence in, in round six. And I think he's, you know, a top – eight guy right one two three four five six seven eight yeah uh, quarterbacks have gone I, I think it's really important to have one of those top eight guys and i think he's kind of the cutoff there uh so happy to happy to get him where i did yeah he's the end uh, of the tier for sure yep all right uh another guy we've talked about at least a little bit uh you know somebody that had a lot of down luck so Kamara is there. We're expecting him to be suspended. Uh, I already Meeting have three running Goodell backs. this week. Yeah, I met with him today. I think they, we were expecting a, a suspension announcement. Um, so that should be available probably tomorrow, I would think, or at least soon. Uh, but the other uh, player that I think is just an easy pick here is Deontay Johnson, who had the eighth most targets last year. He had, uh, you know, over 140 targets, I believe, each of the last two years. He had zero touchdowns last year. Uh, I do think him and Pickett uh, get more on the same page. Uh, It's an easy uh, plug him into wide receiver to target targets. I think he'll have plenty of them. So totally comfortable with with him as a wide receiver, too, even in round seven. Yeah, uh, Deshaun goes Deshaun Watson goes one pick right before me. Uh, Pacheco, JSN, Addison also went. Um, was kind of hoping Deshaun would fall. Uh, every year since coming into the league uh, where he's played a full season, he's finished as a top five quarterback. Um, he looked rusty at the end of last year. I mean, the guy sat 11 games. Anybody would be rusty. So either way, sad I missed him. 
Uh, at this point, the best remaining QBs are Dak to uh, uh, Anthony Richardson, Kirk Cousins, Aaron Rodgers, Geno Smith, Danny Jones, Jared Goff, Russell Wilson, Bryce Wong, and a bunch of other dudes. So the disrespect for Daniel Jones is strong. I I think there's a very he obvious sucks. pick here that, that I'm that I'm pretty sure that you're going to go with. There's an easy pick here that I'm going to go with. Yeah. Ah. Uh, well, uh, it's a lot of pressure. I'm thinking about two different guys, and I want to draft them both. Um, I will say that at this point, I am 1,000% punting at quarterback because nine not have now gone. I'm one of three teams without one. I'm not in a hurry to draft one. Uh, granted, Sleeper is going to draft a bunch of other dudes, but I'll pick one up in one of the later rounds. I am between Alex... James Cook, Rashad Penny, and Michael Thomas. James Cook is the easy answer. Yeah. Easy answer. We've talked about it on our other pods. He has the upside of a of a mid-tier wide receiver or sorry, running back to easy uh, with very little competition. Naheem Hines being hurt. Uh, it seems like they're going to give him the ball. Yeah, Damian Harris is there. Not not that concerned. Uh, upside for Cook is great. Yeah, another TKO for Naheem Hines, uh, injured in a freak jet skiing accident. So, I don't know. Evidently, people can frown on wave runners if anyone's ever listened to Daniel Tosh. Um, I really need a receiver, and I really need some quarterbacks. Kadarius Tony is not healthy. Brandon Cooks, Quinn Johnson, Gabe Davis, Michael Thomas, Juju. Man, I am hurting at wide receiver right now. I am going to still punt at quarterback, I think. Would you go Dak here? Uh, I, I think it's pretty easy to take Dak or Tua, who who are the, the top of the next tier, where Tua is going to keep Hill and Waddle and Gasicki satisfied in that offense as long as he's healthy. Uh, Tua is kind of the next, like when he played, he was really good, whether he can stay healthy or not. Yeah, I, I think, you know, round eight with your team complete um, and the way that, I don't know, sleeper kind of works is that there will be those, neither of those guys will make it back probably. <laughs> um, so it yeah. depends on, on how you want to categorize it, right? Right. I think you're right when you say neither of them make it back. Um. Yes. All right. Fine. You talked me into taking one of the two of them. I will take Tua because I think he has more weapons. Um. Yeah, and you and you you, you can kind of avoid the Lamb and Dak stack, I guess, a little bit. So if they have a bad week, you're not automatically out of it. Taking the L. Uh, Right. So that kind of diversifies you a little bit. You know, sometimes it's nice to stack, but sometimes it's nice to not stack. I like stacking <laughs> the tight end more than I like stacking receiver. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Um, all right. So Cooks went right after David Montgomery, who, uh, you know, if he takes on the Jamal Williams role in Detroit's offense and he has double digit touchdowns, that's a fine pick in round eight. Uh, Dylan Penny, who you talked about, went as well. Uh, you you brought him up. Uh, wide receivers of, of choice here. Um, I, I'm going to take Michael Thomas uh, because I just think that if he stays healthy, he's a wide receiver two at worst, but he might not stay healthy. But still, a, a fine dart throw uh, this late in the draft. Um, Ingram went, um, nothing really else to note. It gave Davis the, the continual breakout seasons coming for him. Uh, whether it ever actually happens is a complete guess on anybody else's part. So my team's complete. Uh, I have three running backs. I have three wide receivers. I have a tight end. I have a quarterback and now it's kind of dart throws for the next you know, four or five rounds where it's just take upside and, and hope it hits. Right. I mean, so, uh, Darth number one, uh, Khalil Herbert, who, uh, 
Nobody knows what's going to happen with the Bears running back position. Could be him. Could be uh, Roshan Johnson. Could be Donta Foreman. No idea. When Herbert's played, um, he's been really good. So dart throw number one. Speaking dark throws, dart throws, excuse me. Um, there's a couple guys I really like that I want pretty much on all my teams. There's a lot of late receivers. Uh, I have no idea if Rashad Bateman is going to be the guy or Zay Flowers will be the guy for, for Odell for or Odell for Baltimore. Uh, Zay Flowers went the pick before me. Rashad and Odell are both still available. Either way, I don't think that that team, I mean, it's Lamar. He's going to run it a lot, and you have J.K. Dobbins, theoretically. Um, I just, I don't know who the guy is, so I'm going to stay away. But what I think is a potentially a better, potentially league-winning dart throw is Devon A-Chain for the Miami Dolphins. Um... There's really nobody there to compete with. Uh, I mean, I guess Raheem Mostert is 75 years old and still playing running back. Um, so he's there. But either way, I'll take A-Chain as the better dart throw. Um, yeah, it should be noted Mostert did sign a two-year $7 million contract. He finished his RB27 last year. Isn't um, he 30? But- uh, good question. He's 31. Still yeah. fast as hell, though. Yeah. Um, man, there's some guys I like here still, uh, round 10. I need, I mean, I'm still, I'm still sitting on two receivers. That's pretty bad. Uh, it needs, <laughs> needs to be addressed, but I said, as I said, I don't know which one is going to be the one in Baltimore. I really like Sky Moore, but I still feel like I could wait on him. Man. Jameson, Elijah Moore. I I'm still doing it. I'm s I don't care if it's a reach. I'm gonna go Sky Moore. Bam. Could, could be, be the wide receiver one in KC. You just don't know. Jamison Williams, if he wasn't suspended for six games, probably would have taken him. Yep. Uh, n- next pick is really easy for me. Uh, I know uh, it's a, another running back, um, but, you know, if Dobbins doesn't play to start the year or, or whatever's going on with him, um, I'm going to take a guy that was, you know, a top five running back uh, the last couple of weeks of last year. That's Jarek McKinnon uh, kind of loading up again on the Kansas City offense. But it. uh with his, you know, receiving prowess and the out, coming out of the backfield and them designing him open on plays, um, that's just an easy, uh, easy pick for me. Uh, and then uh, this is going to kind of screw up Jason probably, um, but I'm going to take the number one wide receiver in Houston and Nico Collins, uh, who's just quite frankly going way too late. And we talked about him in our sleepers uh, podcast last week, but uh, all the tools to be a uh, a wide receiver one uh, in a on a bad team, so totally fine with that. Yeah, I uh, I like him a lot. He was going to be one of my next picks. Um, maybe I should have taken him instead of Sky Moore because I don't think you would have drafted Sky Moore. I digress. Uh, I'm going to try to address the quarterback situation again, which is still kind of hanging out there. Round eleven. Um, I guess I could do it in the next round. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Just, I don't think he'll get back to me because Krogh, um, but I will take Kyler Murray who potentially will miss about a month or two of the season and then hopefully come back and be a, a top three quarterback the rest of the way in fantasy for me. So he's a, he's a great stash, especially if you have an IR spot. I always love taking a player that's hurt, uh, at least at some point in the draft, just so you have a, an automatic free ad, uh, week one. Yep. Absolutely. Free ad week one. And now he could potentially completely address my quarterback situation with Tua. So uh, that frees me up to last pick before kickers and defense. Man, this went fast. Uh, sure last did. pick of the draft. You know, there's been a lot of good press around Rasheed Rice 
in KC. So we'll throw another a dart, dart in. throw. Another Love dart, dart throw. throws. Yep. Um, running backs, uh, I could take down to Foreman just to to kind of core the market uh, on the Bears running back. Um, I, I pr- I'm just going to fire at Rondale Moore, uh, who is especially in PPR more of a machine. Um, but this kind of plays off the Kyler Murray uh, upside when he comes back. Kickers and defense uh, as we uh, talk through the rest here. Um, Jason, how are you feeling? <laughs> I feel like, I don't know. I feel like I waited too long to get my second wide receiver, although I do love Judy as my second wide receiver. Um. Part of me thinks that I would have been better off taking Mixon in the third, passing on Walker altogether. And taking Keenan Allen in the fourth. And taking Keenan Allen in the fourth. Yeah. Then I think it would really love my team. Uh, how about you? How are you feeling? Uh, I, I absolutely despise the Dobbins pick because I kind of forgot that I had Andrews on my team. So don't do that if you're drafting. Um, Why do you despise it? Well, just because I, yeah, I think it's tough to have the tight end and, and uh, running back at the same team. Like if you had Kittle and CMC, like I, I don't know. I guess you could do that, but um, I don't know. Just, just not in, not in love with that specific, uh, specific thing. Uh, other, otherwise, um, you know, Eckler falling at five is completely fine in my books. Yeah. Uh, and then to have the St. Brown, Johnson, Thomas combination that could just be target city uh, between those three. And you throw Nico Collins and Moore on the end. That's fine. Bench stash for for wide receivers. And then, you know, in a vacuum, Eckler, Dobbins, Madison, Herbert McKinnon is totally fine at the running back position. Andrews is top three tight end and Lawrence is the top eight tier quarterback. I'm totally fine with 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 running with this. Yeah, I'm I'm fine running with mine too. I'm just a little nervous if I get a receiver get hurt. Uh if Lamb and Judy, either one of them go down, honestly, I'd be I'd be pretty nervous. Um I would definitely be hawking the waiver wire week one, picking up whoever the stud wire receiver is that breaks out. Hopefully hopefully it's yeah, it could be like or it Rashid could be Rice, you know. <laughs> or it could be, you know, Mechie down in Houston, right? Yeah. Who were you know, where Collins and, and Mechie aren't getting drafted really. No. Or, you know, they are really late. They're gonna have to throw to somebody. Yes. I mean they're, yes. they're not gonna throw to Dalton Schultz twenty times a game down there. No. So like so you know one of those wide receivers is going to be fine. So I, I think both of them should be drafted uh in your leagues. Um but I it would not be surprising at all to see Mechie be the the pickup um after week one. So yeah I, I just think you know I, I think Goddard is a saving grace for you there. Uh I think two is fine. Kyler Murray I like the stack late um just to open up that IR spot. And yeah, it's just uh, repetition is the most important thing is when it comes to draft. Go on sleeper. It's the easiest thing to mock. The computer does it for you. You don't have to be in a room with a bunch of auto drafters or, you know, wait for one guy to make seven, you know, seven minute decision or whatever. It just does it for you, uh, you, you and the computer. So, um, yeah, definitely go on sleeper. It's the best, uh, best app uh whether it's on your phone you can do it online uh off your desktop to uh just mock things out and try different things and figure out what works best for you yeah plus you get to invite your friends which is what fantasy football is about which is kicking your friend's butt at it so it's true why i mean preseason football starts uh this week and it is it's back i'm excited it is back. Saquon has a signed contract. I think his ADP will climb from 111. Uh, it should anyway, in my mind, given the fact that he is now under contract. I wouldn't be surprised to see him work his up towards the way up towards the top eight or nine players. Um, I, th- I think him and Jonathan Taylor will flip. <laughs> they should anyway, right? Very, very easily. Yeah. Especially to, if to the point where... Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it would not surprise me to see Barkley be be the third guy going uh, in the running back position for sure. Yeah. I'd, I'd say it's between him and Chubb for me. So, yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for uh, watching and listening along as we do a mock draft. Uh, my final team, Saquon Barkley, C.D. Lamb, Kenneth Walker, Joe Mixon, Jerry Judy, uh, Goddard, James Cook, Tua, Devon A. Chain, Sky Moore, Kyler Murray, and Rashid Rice versus AK's Eckler, St. Brown, Andrews, Dobbins, Madison, Lawrence, Deontay Johnson, Michael Thomas, Herbert McKinnon, Collins and Rondale Moore. I think I slaughtered you just like I said I would. So <clears throat> thank you for I, uh, playing along, I don't Alex. I th- think that's the case at all. Well, and you're, you're raise your hand idiot. if you've drafted a running back who is not currently practicing in any capacity in the top four picks. Well, that makes one of us. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, Like Alex said, please go to our website, get you some Sacco sheet, which we are going to have coming out. I want to say next two weeks, I think is our goal sometime mid August uh, to help you guys all get prepared for your drafts. We will announce it live here on the podcast when we do have it live and we will make sure that we do a giveaway to give one lucky listener, the Sacco sheet for free this year. So, Thank you, guys, and have a good night. Bye.